Today's project is to install a propane kit on my Honda EU3000IS. Now, I've seen a lot of videos, most of them are real hack jobs. Um, I'd really like to do it a little bit better than what I've seen, but I don't know all my options at this point. Some of them pop holes down here, and in this area here. It's probably not a bad option, but I do keep mine in the back of my pickup when we go to the races. And I don't want a valve or a nipple hanging out that gets smacked up by a foot or something like that. Now I did see one that I did like. I just didn't like the way it exited. I put it up front here. He actually put it here, but he built a new front plate. I'm not sure why he did that. So I want to investigate possibly putting something right here. Then I can build a little protective steel cage around it. So in case it does get kicked, but I do like it off the front. Now, when he did his, there is a clearance up behind here, clearance hole, that he ran the hose through, came down, elbowed it, and came this way. Like I said, he put a new plate on here. Um, but I did notice a lot of room behind here. If I came down, loop the hose, or possibly put a 90 degrees here, come across, put a port right there at 90, come right out here. And that way I can maintain this and hopefully not affect this. I know there's a an inverter unit right about here that needs a lot of cooling. That's why we have these air ducts and there's also some ventilation down underneath. Okay, these nuts here are 10 millimeter. Okay, let's get this cover off. Pull straight out. Nice. So what I'm gonna show you is what I was talking about. See the gap down there? It is ventilation to cool this inverter. So we want to make sure we as we tuck the hose close to this. And the plan is to pull these wires back, run the hose right through there, back to the carburetor. All right, let's open this pan and see what our options are. Okay, side panel's open. If you look around here, you see where those wires come through, right there? See my finger? That's where I hope to put the uh, gas supply pipe or tube through. Run it down, and run it right up to where the nipple's gonna sit, right around there. Pop that air cleaner off. I did see in one of the videos, gentlemen, pull this off, get a little more room. Cause it is rather tight in here. That just slips into a groove underneath. Not a big deal. Here's the cover. Air cleaner. Good shape. All right, now I've got to remove these two 10 millimeter nuts and that 10 millimeter bolt. And this air box should pull straight out.
Oh, it's amazingly loose. Make sure that the torque is on that. It tells me the fact that I didn't tighten that one down. This Jenny's only a year old, we brought it new. We've got two vent tubes here that actually just draw her into the air box when the engine's running. Clips grabbed a wire harness. There we go. This adapter I picked up from NashFuels.com, and it will fit the 3500 Predator and also the 3000 IS Honda. So they say. I haven't tried to fit it in there yet. But. And the gas will be drawn up through here, Venturi effect. We'll draw it into the airflow and ignite it. So let's see if she fits. All right, there's a close up of what we're looking at. The adapter will slip right on here, just like this. Now you can see the features in the uh, gasket and also the carburetor and carburetor plate, their orifices and so on. Well, this one is relieved in the back to encompass that area. We'll go on like that. This hose is a bit in the way. This hose right here is in the way of the nipple. Saw that on a lot of installations. And all they recommend is just pushing it out of the way. And as you can see, it's just a copper tube. I think I can just push it gently and move it out of the way. <laughs> Maybe not so gently. All right, finger obviously was not enough. That should work. So she lines up now. Maybe just a little bit more. That should be fine. Oh, we should fit over that nice. Okay. All right. Oh, one other thing I need to do. Because of the thickness of this plate, I need to draw these studs out. I don't like doing it. I'd like to replace them. I do not have them available. So we're going to take a measurement on these length on the length here and also the length of the width of this adapter and see if I can draw these out just enough to make up for the adapter thickness okay let's get a thickness on this plate it is Almost bang on a quarter of an inch thick.
these studs are almost bang on an inch sticking out. So I need to try and draw them out an inch, or bring them out to an inch and a quarter. I don't know if that's feasible. Because they do go into the engine block back here. But we'll keep an eye on it. We'll start with this one here. All right, let's take the gasket off, put that aside. Maybe one more turn. Yeah. Just put a little marking on it to keep track of the turns. Let's say a half a turn. I don't want to go any more than I have to. It's in a quarter. Okay. Get back on. Adapter. All right. Okay, one other thing I'm going to have to do is that bolt that goes into this bracket is going to need to be spaced out a quarter of an inch just to keep this air box from getting twisted. So let me go see what I got for an adapter or a spacer. I got lucky, I think. In my washer container, I found this plastic tube. It actually has a quarter inch ID, which is the, what the bolt size is. So I cut a piece of it down, and I came up with this little washer. <laughs> It'll work fine. All right, we found another issue. We got the spacer on, but the bolt's too short. 
head off to my metric supply and see what I have. So I did find a bolt with this guy here. Looks the same as the one that came out. This was the protrusion we had without the spacer. Now we need to measure how far this one does stick out. That is It's like five sixteenths. Got the bolt marked at five sixteenths with the spacer on it. So I just cut that off with the hacksaw. All right, we got the bolt turned down. That feels good. There we go. That should work. All right. Let's get this back in here a bit. This, this little hose here, it goes into these clips. She's threading in there real nice. Perfect. Perfect. Seems to fit in there quite nice. Okay. 
for the clearance through here. All right, you know, I'm going to button this up, this cover, and then I'll uh, work on putting that hose through. Vacuum hoses are on. All right. All right, let's see if we can that hose through. this at the right angle so I can get my fingers in there and still take this air box cover off I think that'll work all right Cover closes is fine. Okay, got the hoses out here. You can loop it around like this. As you can see, it doesn't affect the uh, cooling down here at all. I'll put an elbow in there, drill a hole through the face with my fitting right there. All right, let's get off to that. All right, the idea here is drill a hole right here. I ordered a bulkhead connector, so I can go here with the bulkhead connector. Put an elbow in the back, not this one, but similar. And then mount this gas fitting right there off the bulkhead. And then I'll add some sort of a guarding around it. I had the option of doing this or going with the um, mail. I think I want to go this way mainly because this will seal. So when I do disconnect the gas and or the, the LP and then go to the gas, it won't be drawing any air through the nipple. I didn't want to rely on just a rubber cap going over the top. So we're going to try this approach the way i'm doing it i can always change it out to the nipple if there's a problem um, but this is our approach at this point i think i want to do before i go any further with the project is now that i have the plate on the uh, carburetor venturi plate i've got the gas line plugged up here i'm going to make sure she runs normally let's turn the fuel on 
Full choke. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm curious, so if I take this plug out, will it start? Definitely feel pulsing at the carburetor. A lot less there with the idle control. Uh, okay. This is fine. Runner out of fuel and uh, wait for the bulkhead adapter and the bronze elbows to show up. Now the carburetor is clear of any gasoline. So if I was going to run it on LP right now, I wouldn't have to worry about carburetor getting gummed up. Okay, next chapter coming up once everything arrives. All right, waiting for my bulkhead connector for this area. I'm going to drill a hole here, put a bulkhead connector in, in an elbow. And then this valve or this uh, quick disconnect will be mounted 90 degrees like this. The reason why is when I go to the camp, the uh, campsite or I have it in the back of the truck, the way I position the generator, I have access this way for the hose. The exhaust blows out the back of the pickup. If I put it the other way, it would be aiming towards the cab of the truck. The other option I have is to send it vertical, which is still an option. But I want to wait until that comes in. I can try different positions. So, I did try it. It worked pretty good. It fired up almost immediately. Let's see if she'll kick up now. Gas on. Prime it three times. That's in eco mode. She stumbled a little bit that time, but that's the first time she did that. Back to eco. All right, I got a little ahead of myself. My step drill is not big enough. So my bulkhead adapter will fit. What I do have is the hole saw bit will work. But have you ever tried to drill a hole saw through a larger hole and the thing wanders all over and makes a mess? I'm going to try a technique here that should allow me to drill the hole just right, pass that through, and be able to mount my bulkhead connector. Okay, I found this scrap piece of metal. I'm going to see if I can line that up in there. There we go. Yeah, that should work. The old pilot hole started.
Yeah, that moved a little bit. Let me see if I can recenter it. Now let's try a piece of wood this time. The plastic was giving away too much. Yeah, that's pretty stout. Okay, let's see if this will work. So now we'll put the uh, rubber hose on there. And now we'll complete this side, and I just need to put the quick disconnect on the front. Okay, with it all mounted up, let's see if she'll start. That started with Eco One, then they started with Eco R. gas and then switch it over to propane. Thank you. 